Okay, 11.3 Infinite Series. Pause and copy all this. Pause, pause, pause. Copy, copy, copy. Okay, Zeno. Zeno was a Greek philosopher, ancient Greek philosopher. And he had trouble getting anywhere because he figured he could never get there. So let's say I am trying to walk two meters. I first have to walk halfway there, which is one meter. And then I have to walk half of the remaining way there, and then half of the remaining way there, and so on and so forth. So the next one would be 1 over uh, 8, then 1 over 16, 1 over 32. Okay, so I have to do an infinity of tasks, so I can never get there. Now, of course, this is not true. It's just uh, you're dividing the number 2 into smaller and smaller pieces. But this gives us an example of what's called an infinite series. So you can think of it as a sequence, but uh, instead of commas, we have plus signs. So we're adding everything up rather than just treating it as a uh, you know numbered list. OK, so an infinite series. Um, here's our infinite series. Um, numbers in a definite order, add it up. Can we use the sigma notation? Um, I'll talk more about that later. Okay, so the basic idea is you're summing up this thing. Um, you start at one and you end, well, you don't end in this case, you go to infinity. So you can see over here, we start at one. It's because of this one. And we go up, up by one every time. It's a standard feature of a sigma notation expression. And um, we'll have a short form. If I write this, uh, what I mean is this. Okay, just because these series from one to an infinity occur so often that we have a short form. Okay, Zeno series can be written uh, this way. Let me explain why. Well, if I have your attention up here, what, uh, what is that first? What is that one? Well, I can write that as a half to the power of zero. And then the half right here, that's a half to the power of one. And then the quarter, that's a half squared. And then the one over eight, oops, half squared. And then the one over eight is a half cubed, and so on and so forth. So you can think of this as being um, uh, being my general term or leading me to my general term. I get, um, well, here's n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. So I get a n is equal to, well, I see the pattern here. It's always a base half. Um, but when I have a four here, I have a three here. And when I have a three here, I have a two here. So this number here is one less than this number here. So I'm getting the n minus one there. And this series overall can be written with the summation notation n equals 1 to infinity 1 half n minus 1. Okay, pause and copy all that stuff from blue and red. I do do do, I do do do. And we'll move on. Okay, so Zeno series can be written this way. 
where the, we call this the summand. The summand is half to the n minus one. Okay, so I have a series of definitions here. What we want to do is talk about convergence. Um, we want to say, if we have a infinite series, what does it mean for that series to converge? Well, you know, a reasonable person would say, well, it converges if this infinite sum adds up to some real number. So we'll get something like that as our definition eventually. But going in that direction, we'll start with this definition here. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're taking the very strange infinite series and we are going to cut it off after a certain number of terms. So that's why we say partial sum. So this one starts off as usual, a1, a2, a3, plus dot, dot, dot. Now it's the last term I consider is going to be a subscript n, whatever that happens to be. Okay, so for example, S, uh, S3 would be a1 plus a2 plus a3. Three. S4 would be A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus one more term. Just to give you a couple examples here. So the idea of a partial sum, what is the idea? Well, the idea is that you end up with here S subscript N, you end up with a sequence. Okay, things are getting a bit messy now. The partial sum of a series is in fact a sequence. So you may have to repeat that a few times, but it's an important Thing to understand. Okay, let's look at Zeno again. Partial sums for Zeno. Well, S1 is going to be, oops, let's just write down what uh, AN is again. It's this thing. Now, S1, that's just A1, which is a half zero, which is one. S2, it's A1 plus A2, which is one plus a half. S, well, let's skip ahead to S4. You get a one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth. Oops. And then uh, S, uh, let's see, S6. We'll do S6 next. For S6, we just get a little bit more of the full series. So two more terms. So you can see these are partial, partial sums, whereas uh, Zeno, Zeno's series is an infinite sum. Where was it? It was this guy. You see how it's got the dot, dot, dot on the end. Okay, so that's the full, the full sum here. And these are some partial sums. So S6 would be you know, just adding up the first six terms. S4 would be adding up the first four terms and blah, 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 blah. Okay, now we're ready to 
talk about convergence. So pause and copy this definition. It's a very important one. Okay, so we're talking about what it means to be a convergent series. So to be a convergent series, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this sequence here. So a sequence of partial sums. That's equal to, it's a sequence like S1 comma, S2 comma, S3 comma, S4 comma, dot, dot, dot. So this is a sequence. So as you go further and further along the sequence, what you're doing is you're taking more and more and more of the full sum. You're getting more and more of the full sum. So you can think of this sequence, you can think of it as approaching. Uh, well, hopefully it's approaching the actual value for the full infinite series. Okay, in terms of Zeno, the further you go along here, uh, the closer you get, presumably, to uh, 2. Uh, because you don't remember, at the beginning, I was 2 meters away from my door. OK, so if this sequence converges, then what do I mean? You know, so lim s n is a real number. That's what I mean, right? And uh, capital N is going to infinity. So if this sequence converges, then we make the following definition. <clears throat> okay, we say just S, capital S, is going to be this limit. And if you think about it, it makes sense to assign that value to this full series. I'll remind you that what we mean here is n equals 1 to infinity. So in words, you could say the limit of the partial sums, so limit of the partial sums uh, equals the full sum. And if you know if the limit exists, it's an important Caveat. Okay, so again, we're going back to what I didn't read up here. Okay, as you move along, you go S2, S4, S6, S7, S8, S9. What you're doing is you're getting more and more of the full sum or in a full infinite series. And then we decide that the limit is going to actually equal 
the full sum provided this limit exists. Okay, I hope you agree with that. I hope you agree that this is a reasonable definition. Okay, that's what maybe I'm trying to get you to, uh, maybe I understand, but uh, you should ask yourself, do you agree that this is a reasonable definition? If you have objections, then you should uh, ask me or talk to me about them.